Hi, I'm Sharon Sumner, community leader, speaker, blogger, consultants, all things Power Platform and business applications with Office 365. This is a business productivity series where we're looking at videos to help you get to business value faster. So let's get started. So this is contract automation part two. Previously, we've used Teams to look at how we create a contract. Well, that's the beginning of contract life. This video is gonna look at what happens when that contract comes back in. What happens between the creation and the fully signed PDF is anybody's business. So what we need for contracts that are coming back in is a slightly different format of a document, a power app, and some lovely Teams magic. So, what's the challenge? What are we talking about? Once a document has been signed and is received as a PDF, we need to extract the contract data into a list to be able to monitor contract expiry. One of the biggest problems that I see in businesses is losing sight of NDAs that have gone out of date, uh, statements of work that have expired, all manner of challenges around expiry of documents. So this system is designed to be able to track the data, exactly who to contact at that point of expiry, and to give you some notification within the team's structure. So again, typical uses, contracts, supplier agreements, NDAs, all of those kind of lovely pieces of paper. How we're going to do this? What well, technology we're going to use today is the Power Apps AI Builder, which is going to be the PDF Reader module. We're going to deploy via Teams and SharePoint Online. So we're going to jump into the Microsoft Teams environment where we already have the contract team that we used last time. And we can see that we already have some contract details and some completed contracts. So again, last time we were taking contract details and we were populating them within a complex contract document. This time we're going to build a Power App and we're gonna use the AI Builder. So if we jump straight into the AI Builder, you can see here, I'm just highlighting at the top that this one is a demo. The AI Builder is separately licensed. Please go and have a look at that. Um, but within a dev environment, you can have a play. We've got many models and um, ways that you can use the AI Builder without having to do the cognitive services jump to Azure side of things. So these are, are pre-built mechanisms for you to be able to allow the technology to be a bit more accessible. So we're going to use a form processing, which is our PDF reader. What we're doing is we're building a model. So we've started the model by saying, hey, here's some documents, here's some PDFs, have a read of these and work out from future PDFs that we're going to give you in exactly this format, the data within that document that we're going to want to bring out to a SharePoint list to make use of. Again, this could be used for anything. This could be a a job card, this could be a barcode, this could be any information that has additional information on the page that you're going to want to bring out to a data source, doesn't have to be SharePoint. So there's plenty to play with here. So at the moment we're just analysing the documents. This actually doesn't take very long, although it's always one of those points where you feel like, should I pause the video? Should I do it in the background? No, I shouldn't. Okay, so you can see here I have some documents saved. And this is what I mean by the type of document that you're going to need in this solution. So basically we're looking for a pair of values. So we need a, a label and we need a value to be able to intuit that there's data and of type. So what we have here is the system has intuited all of these data types from my summary sheet. So this summary sheet, I stole it from my business actually, this summary sheet is what we use as a header for any type of document so that we can use this model in any way. So as you saw there, I picked all of the fields that I want to use in the model um, and I then come back and I have a model that has been built. If we go into the model, we can then publish it and that allows us to be able to access that model within Power Automate and Power Apps. So for this example, we're actually going to use Power Apps, but instead of clicking the Power Apps button over here, once the publishing is finished, what we're going to do is uh, use the button that turns up below the training document. Here it is, this use model button. Uh, I find that the use model jumps us straight into the create new app button. And when we go into the app, when it's created for us, it already has the analyze block in place. Now, one thing that I will say is that what I'm gonna end up with is essentially a phone app, which isn't necessarily ideal for the Teams layout. Normally we would start with a tablet app, but let's proceed with this so that I can show you kind of what you get very quickly out of the box, getting to business value faster. So as you can see, we are in the Power App Studio and we have the analyze box already. Now, I always find it's best for me 
this works better, to come into the preview mode and to actually analyze a document before I get started on trying to work the app into how I want it. It seems to be the best way to provide context to the rest of the app for the data that we're going to be addressing within the app, text boxes, etc. And I don't actually use, normally you would just use a text label for this because you're bringing the value out, but I'm going to use a text input because it might be that the text scanned will say one name and it's slightly misspelt or there's a smudge on it and it can't quite tell what that name, company name, etc. is. So what I'm going to do is use a text input box. I'm going to address it to the form processor, the form contents, and I'm going to get the fields and specifically, I love that tab button, specifically we're going to look at, for this particular field, we are going to pick the, I think it's the to field, is what I called it. No, we'll look at contact. There we go, that's better. Now nicely we can just control C, control V uh, to replicate, although now we have the most marvellous right click, copy and paste, which is relatively new, so we'll use that too. Uh, by replicating the fields, all we have to do is click within one and change just the end piece of the field uh, selector. So we're going to have a look at the expiry date and let's also have a look at, I think it's two, which is the company name. Yeah. Okay, so that's the data that came out with this particular uh, analysis. If we hit analyze again or we go into the preview mode, we can pick a different one of the documents and instead of Bob Smith we then end up with Bob Crew. Bob's my kind of go-to name. Um, so you can see that we are analyzing the data uh, every time from the document so no matter which document we use we are pulling that data out. The next part of the process is going to be to save that back to a SharePoint list. So what we want to do is we want to save the details, not from the analysis, but from the text boxes, just in case we changed it. So we're going to need to do a patch statement to bring that data through to the SharePoint list. So the patch statement then is going to require a list to patch into. So we need to jump into the SharePoint site and create a new list for this data to be put into. So let's call this contracts signed so that we know that this isn't the same as the contract generation list. So within here we want to add a couple of um, a couple of columns for the company name and which I'll okay I've left a space in that I might just fix that. Uh, we're also going to put the contact in and um, later we'll, we'll have a look at putting that expiry date in too. So when we go back to the Power App itself, the next thing we need to do is to add in that data source to be able to reference it, to be able to write to the list. So we're going to jump over to the data source on the left hand side. If we push this menu out, we can see data sources. We've got some suggestions, but we want to have a look at the connectors, the SharePoint connector, add that SharePoint site that we were previously in with our current identity, point to the contract team and the contract signed list. Very easy, simple steps just to pick that content that we want. We then have our data source here for us as the in your app uh, section and we can refresh this data or remove this data source etc as we want to. So let's get rid of that. So now we just need to write the patch statement to be able to put the data and it doesn't have to be just the data that we've seen on the screen, we could put all data in but let's stick with these couple of fields just to update the SharePoint list to show you how this is done. So a patch statement is relatively easy, uh, the system recognises patch, uh, so what we're doing here is we're just following some very simple prompts, uh, there's some fantastic videos out there about the patch statement, my friend Shane Young has some fantastic stuff, um, and it's very easy to follow along, and he, like I, doesn't make very pretty apps, <laughs> but he might also uh, show you some of the typos and errors that he makes along the way, and I'm very much the same, you'll notice that I do make uh, the odd mistake and it's worth pointing out because um, those things can get in your way and you can spend a lot of time troubleshooting items. One of the ones that I'll show you in here is firstly uh, we need to add a title into this list because it is uh, an item list it has a dependency on the required field for title so we're going to put the company name in title as well as putting that company name also within the company field. Now you'll notice here in the patch that as I'm addressing each of these items and do slow this down uh, if you want to learn a bit more about patch and you want to do this yourself to follow along is that we are addressing the text of that value 
But when it comes to uh, the end value where we're going to put the expiry in, we'll have to do a little bit more magic on that one to bring that through as a date. But let's work on that when we get there. So patch details in. We're now going to run the preview. Uh, as you can see, this, I don't know if you can see, that one came in as Satya Nadella and I changed it to Sir Satya Nadella, respect. <laughs> We could just hit the save button, but let's analyze a different document because I messed around with that record. In fact, we'll bring the same one in, which is the Microsoft one. This time the sir will disappear. There we are. And let's put limited on the end of Microsoft. Oops, caps lock. Just to denote it as a limited company. And then we're gonna save those details. Save button's gone gray. So that's a big clue that it has saved successfully. So if we now pop back to the SharePoint list and there's our record beautifully created. So the next thing to do is to integrate back to the team site. So we want to see this working in the team's environment. So we are going to jump back to teams itself and within the contract team, we are going to add a tab. So we're just going to search for power app and we're going to add the power app in a couple of simple steps, just some authentication. So I've already shared the power app to the right teams. Uh, I've given it a nice uh, green star icon so that I knew which one it would be in the list. So I can easily pick it. Uh, so it's been saved, shared and published uh, to give us the app live in the team's environment. I'm also going to add in the SharePoint list so that we can see the list entries that we've generated from the app. So from an end user point of view, what we'll see is the app to be able to scan in the document and the resulting line appear in the signed contracts list. So let's just give that a go. So we're going to analyze one of the documents. Again, this could be more other documents of the same type. It's just easier to keep using these documents because it will be fast to analyze. There we are, Jane Doe, company two, and we're going to save those details. Now, we could put some nice notifications on the end of that save button. We could put some animation. We could put some navigate to. Uh, again, loads of other bits and pieces that we can do to embellish on that um, in the future. Let's just add in another one, Claire Collier. And let's annotate this one a little bit so that we know it's not just straight from the document. We know it's come from the right fields. Nip over to the contract sign list. And there we have it. Jane Collier Jr. So as far as the end user is concerned, items are being immediately created in the signed contracts list. So having created a process that allows us to scan in these documents, now it's really important that we do something with the data that we're collecting. So let's look at how we can submit a notification to the team back in the team channel to say, hey, something needs to be renewed. Um, because mostly contracts, NDAs, etc., last for a period of time and then they need to be reviewed. Contract expiry can be a huge expense to the business and we want to avoid that by notifying the team when something's coming up for review. So let's jump in to um, Power Automate and write something to enable us to get some notifications. Now to be able to do this, I've added an expiry column, which is a simple date column. Um, and we're going to nip into Power Automate and create a recurrence driven flow uh, that's going to give us uh, the ability for this to check on a regular basis and what it's going to do is going to check all items in the list once a month so we're going to use the sharepoint and we're going to get items from that sharepoint list we're going to point this at the teams list and then we're going to add in some logic to give us the notification so we're going to apply a condition to each item that we look at and what we're going to do is we're going to find out if the expiration date is within a certain set of parameters of today's date. So bearing in mind that we're doing this every month, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check whether the expiry is less than or equal to today plus 30 days. So that's basically anything that's expiring in the next 30 days. So the way we do that is we add an expression, we use add days and we add, uh, we add in the UTC now function to say today. And then we're going to put a comma and then put in the length of days that we might add on, which is 30 days in this instance. We're going to pop that in the condition and we're going to say, OK, if something is expiring within that time frame. So if yes, we then want to do a notification in Teams. Now, I always lose which one this is. It's none of these. It's actually a notification. Hang on. Scrolling down, it is post a message to a channel. This one. Okay, so we're going to pick the channel within our team 
And again, this could be any team, any channel. It could be a different team that we're notifying of the expiry. And we're going to pop in just a quick message. So we could have done an adaptive card here, but I haven't got time to show you that on this video, maybe in the next one. So we're going to say, hey, everyone, something is getting old. Uh, we're going to put in a hyperlink back to the item itself so that we can check it out. Uh, so with a little bit of HTML here, we're just putting in an ahref just to link you directly to that document within the message itself. So let's save that. And then within Power Automate, we can run a test because we are manually triggering this instead of it working on the recurrence. So we basically say run this now. And I need to hit the done button, which I always forget to do. And here we are. So it's applied to each, which was a, a whole one. And it's because I've put in a date that's well in the past, um, it's triggered the notification. So if we jump back into the team and look in the posts, we can see, oh dear, look at that. We can see that there is a notification there. Okay, you can see what I did there. So um, rookie HTML mistake, I put a capital A on the ahref, uh, which won't be recognized as HTML. So I'm just gonna nip back here and change the A to a little A, uh, hit save on that one, and then we'll run that test again. So what might happen is every 30 days, uh, you may get a whole bunch of notifications or you may some months get none. Uh, if things haven't been addressed and haven't been renewed, then you're gonna keep getting more and more notifications. So this may not be uh, a method that's gonna last too long, or it may be that we want to, um, we want to find a different way of doing this. There it is, as you can see, HTML completely respected now. Uh, and we have a link directly to the list item within SharePoint. So there we have it. The whole solution within Teams allows us to import the contract with the expiry date and then the flow is going to run every 30 days to check whether that contract or any of the contracts in the list have expired and they're going to give us a notification. So let's just run through another example, analysing another one of the documents. Bob Crew, we can see there we have an expiry date and we've already got Bob Crew in the list. Let's just change that to another one, Bob Smith. Perfect, I have a bit of a thing for Bob as a name. Easy to type. Uh, and if we go back to contract signed, ah, our expiry date hasn't appeared. Now, why would that be? Aha, okay, we know what this is. Because we are analyzing the Power App in the previous published instance. So we've made changes to our Power Apps. I can prove it by hitting the button again, but um, we have not published this version of the Power App. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna nip back to the Power App and we're gonna hit publish. So once we've published this, that's now not gonna be a problem. So I can show you a test in here just to demonstrate that that expiry date works. There's Bob Smith, save his details, and we should have an expiry of the first of the first in the expiry list, there it is. And if we now go back to this tab, we should have the new version of the published app. So let's just check that we have. We'll use the Microsoft one again. Here we have the first of the fifth. Let's save those details. Pop over to the contract sign tab. And there we have it. So watch out for not publishing your app. But now we have our full solution. We could go and run the flow, but that wouldn't show you anything particularly new. So what will happen now on a monthly basis, we'll get those notifications for anything that is gonna run out. So business productivity win. We have a contracts team that's not only able to easily create a document, but when a document comes back signed in PDF form, we're now easily able to scan that in and get the details of the document that was signed with the dates that it was signed back into the system so that we can remind ourselves for renewal. It's a fast automated process that's gonna have high value and save money in the long run.